<laughs> Careful, I lose control. Flying a kite's all about control. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, I can't turn over control to an inexperienced city kid. This isn't as easy as I make it look. I studied the Beaufort wind scale for three years. I never make mistakes. <laughs> Rats! That's never coming down. <laughs> For a city kid, you sure can't climb a tree! Not a scratch. Thanks, George. As a reward, I'll let you fly her. <laughs> Bill? <laughs> Billy? Coming! I promised I'd help Mom gut a pumpkin. I won't be long. <laughs> you watch the kite till I get back. George figured he could watch the kite even better while it flew. George was really flying that kite now. Or maybe it was flying him. without saying goodbye, city folk. kid who never flew a kite before. Got her up higher than I ever did. <gasps> Whoa! Well, hi, Bill. You own binoculars? Sure do. What's trailing behind that kite? Oh, it's George. It's George? And he's got a squirrel on his head. Bill, you call the fire department. Okay. Why? I don't know. They seem to know how to do everything. What are you going to do? I'm going up there after him. George! Huh? George! It was his friend, the man with the yellow hang glider. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, hang on tight. <laughs> We're going home. George would never forget the day he was almost a bird. <laughs> and he added almost being a bird to the list of things squirrels don't like. You're a natural kite flyer, kid. Good work. Lunch is ready. Here's some lunch for you too, Jumpy. What's going on? Mucaro gnocchi. 
She has been sneaking into the main room and scratching up at the seats. It's a disaster. You see? Look what she has done. <laughs> Can you believe a little gato, a sweet little kitty, could do such damage? Uh, I must ban gnocchi from the restaurant. Oh, well, we saw the house you built her. It's very nice. Grazie. I plan to add a second story. Eh? Oh, that is gnocchi. She wants to come in. Oh, I feel terrible. She only wants to come in because you say she cannot. Oh, typical cat. This kitchen is in torment. I suspect there will be no cannoli until this problem is solved. Eh? eh? Back outside. At the museum, George was too distracted to concentrate. Professor Wiseman. Hey guys, welcome to my new exhibit. It's called How Great Scientists Got Their Great Ideas. These are portraits of some great scientists. Isaac Newton, Benjamin Franklin, Marie Curie. And Albert Einstein. Once you think like a scientist, George, you can solve almost any problem. George had a problem. He wanted cannoli. <laughs> You know, scientists think about problems and get ideas to solve them. They observe, then collect information. <laughs> and if that information doesn't help solve their problem, they observe more and get a different idea. <gasps> oh dear, excuse me. Young man, get down from there. <laughs> George wondered what great scientists would do if they were monkeys who had no cannoli because gnocchi had scratched the booths. I say, do we know for certain that she did it like the chef believes? You must think about what you observed. Hmm. George did see Noki scratch the door, but could she have scratched the booth too? Hmm, what you observe does not support the chef's idea about Noki making the scratches. If George could prove Noki was innocent, Chef Pischetti would be happy, and George would have cannoli. Oh, I love cannoli! George had to observe more. Monkey? That guy was so wrong. <laughs> George showed them what he had discovered. Proven Yoki is innocent. I'm so happy. I'm gonna make two trays of cannoli. <laughs> exactly. Cannoli for everyone on the house. <laughs> Making enough cannoli for everyone was exhausting because though George thought like a scientist, he ate like a monkey and drinking juice. George had seen a lot of birds, but none wearing one of those. Bird had seen a lot of animals, but none doing that. 
He wasn't going anywhere till he figured out what kind of animal George was. George, be careful out there. Hold on. Just because he came back here doesn't make this his home. <laughs> Homing pigeons have special homes. Ah, that's the pizza. Wash up. George, he needs to go home. This just isn't a good home for pigeons. Oh. If that's how it had to be, then George would turn their home into a good home for pigeons. <laughs> wasn't perfect. Uh -oh. Oh. Yet. <laughs> Compass, good to see you. Yeah, Compass is an almost homing pigeon. He won't admit he has a weak sense of direction. <laughs> George, the doorman is the pigeon's friend. He came to take him home. <laughs> to his real home. Everybody, look who's home! See, he's back where he belongs. I bought it for birds to sit in, so you can draw them. Nice effort, George. But birds want to sit in a real tree. <coughs> Compass, look, a real tree for you. Make yourself at home. Pigeons still didn't know what George was, but he sure made a good tree. Out for something special. You know what this morning's crying out for? Huh? Donuts! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on! I, I have to get dressed. I can't go out like this. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm, I'm going. You don't know impatient until you've been a monkey waiting for a donut. How about eggs with those donuts? Hey, count the eggs and write down how many we have. <laughs> Ready. So how many eggs do we have? Hmm, there are no eggs. 
Well, why didn't you write zero? <laughs> oh, you don't know. I thought I was teaching you everything, and I forgot nothing. <laughs> zero alone means no eggs. None at all. <laughs> but zero with other numbers makes them mean a lot more. See, if we write a zero after one, that's 10. <laughs> <laughs> write another zero, that's 100. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thousand. Ten thousand. Hey, nice zeros. You've got it. Whoa. I'll go in here and buy eggs while you get the donuts, okay? One dozen donuts, please. We'll meet back home. And be a good little monkey. George was really hungry. But his order only had a measly one on it. Huh? Then he remembered what the man with the yellow hat had told him about zeros. <laughs> George, Chucky, good to see ya. Oh, is that an order for your friend with the yellow hat? <laughs> One hundred dozen? Oh, he must be having a giant donut party! <laughs> George realized what his zeros had done. But try explaining that to a dog. George could only think of one solution to a problem this big. George realized he couldn't go home because then those donut people would know where he lived. So, in the end, George headed home with one dozen donuts. There's no monkey on that dog. <laughs> <laughs> monkey! We lost him. <laughs> them all. <laughs> so in the end, George got one dozen donuts, like he was supposed to. And the hard-working firefighters thought everything was perfect. How many left, George? <laughs> ah! If one car was fun, Imagine what you could do with two. George had to show his great new car shoes to someone. George couldn't wait to see the look on Hunley's face. That wasn't the look he expected. Hunley didn't want monkey handprints all over the clean doors. George didn't know how to turn around and go back. I don't know. We have too many roller skates. Now, what can we do to make people more interested in skates? 
Well, how about having a roller skating monkey give demonstrations? And just where are we going to find a roller skating monkey? The skates are our gift to you. You just skate in front of the store whenever you can. <laughs> George liked his new skates. But what were these black things for? George thought that even Hunley would have to admire his skates, especially since now he knew how to stop. Monkey on wheels looked wrong, but a proud, sleek dachshund on nice wheels. George knew exactly what Hunley wanted to do. He couldn't imagine how they were ever going to stop. <laughs> then he could. Hanley, I've been worried. Where have you? You are a muddy mess. Ooh, looks like he's not the only one. We can't have the tenant see us like this, Hunley. I'll get a towel and get you cleaned up, boy. Time for you to clean up too, George. Aww. Hey, wait a minute. George? Hunley was sure if that monkey and cat hadn't been around, he could have learned to skate. Say, weren't there two pairs of skates? Must have been my imagination. <laughs> so, what do you think? Very impressive. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it, George. Oh, we should go. The rocket presentation is starting soon. Are you coming with us, George? Or do you want to stay here and watch the clock? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's okay with Professor Wiseman, it's okay with me. Now, if you want to see the little people play again, move the minute hand once around to 12. <laughs> Have fun. How long does it take to build a clock like that? Oh, about three years. Oh, that reminds me. I'll be right back. George, be a good little monkey. Exactly. George wanted to see the little people again. That looked like George's friend, Compass, the almost homing pigeon. Because when all the other homing pigeons homed in on the statue, he almost made it. It was 
compass all right. George was happy to see his friend the pigeon. He couldn't fix the minute hand, and that's what made the little people play. George remembered there was another way into the clock, the back. Take something apart. It's a good idea to pay attention to what went where. Where could George find out how a clock's parts go together? The library. Of course. He hoped studying the big clock would show him exactly what to do with the little clock. that noise had stopped. Whose tools are these? Okay, and this goes there. Now, you see? What a beautiful clock. Did you make it? Oh, I know everything about clocks, but not one thing about understanding monkey. George, how did this heavy metal toolbox get so... George thought he could keep the bunnies company while Bill was away. They were so still, so quiet, so fuzzy. Bunnies, bunnies. Bill wouldn't mind if he petted one bunny, just once, if he was very, very careful. Bunnies were so still and quiet and fast. They were almost too fast to see. At least they couldn't get out of the yard. Bill was not going to be happy about this. <laughs> to the bunnies, this was a big game of hide and seek, which was not good for George. The bunnies were too fast. George would have to outthink them. 
He counted the bowls. He'd caught Whitey, Spotty, Black Ears, Cottontail, Brownie, and a jumpy squirrel. <laughs> um, add being grabbed by a monkey to the list of surprises the squirrels really don't like. Not all footprints lead to cute little bunnies. George had caught every bunny except Herbert Nininger. And Bill would be home soon. <laughs> George had looked everywhere. What he needed was a bunny expert. But who knew a lot about bunnies? It wasn't going to work. George tried to explain this was no time to play with a fuzz ball. She had to find Herbert Nininger. This was no ordinary fuzz. This was the end of Herbert Nininger. Hey, George. Keeping the bunnies company? Thanks. As a reward for doing that and being so patient, I'm going to let you pet one right now. Petting a bunny isn't easy. It's all about maintaining control. Step one, unlock latch. <laughs> but you want to pet a bunny, don't you? <laughs> OK, you sure are one careful kid. Hey. How'd that acorn get in there? For famous restaurant critic, Salitesio. Oh. Mm. <laughs> when she likes a place, business booms. So it's very important that everything be perfect. She has the delicate taste. You said that would be fresh bread. <laughs> I don't see any bread here. Well, her taste is delicate, <laughs> but her voice, uh, not so much. This hard stuff was spaghetti? Didn't smell like anything. George wanted to replace his broken piece. He'd seen the chef put the rest of it in the pot. It didn't smell like much, and the steam coming out was hot. George had to be careful. It had changed. Maybe, maybe it wasn't just donut makers. Maybe all kitchens were magic. Here was a pot that turned crisp things into floppy things. What else could it turn floppy? A soft floppy egg. That'd be funny. Good candidate for floppification. Hmm. 
if sugar were soft and floppy, instead of grainy, you could chew it all day like gum. <laughs> he put some sugar in the fluffification pot. It disappeared. Well, this made no sense at all. George was pretty sure the brown thing was a potato. Huh. Weird. Green vegetable bats. George knew the chef would be happy with all the fun extra things he'd turned floppy. <sighs> Who turned my plain pasta into crowded spoon soup? <laughs> Somehow, floppification didn't work on spoons. I... <sighs> oh, I don't like this at all, but it smells good. She was right. The longer that stuff stayed in the floppifying pot, the better it smelled. Do you know there's a cat and a monkey in your kitchen? Oh. <laughs> uh, the monkey uh, made the stew. Ooh, quite good. Oh, but you said you don't like it. If you made it, it's no good. But for a monkey, woohoo! What's his recipe? Well, uh... Never mind, I got it. Maybe kitchens aren't magic. Maybe it's cooks who are magic. Yoki, how you can lose so many balls, huh? <laughs> Any day that starts out just smelling... <laughs> ...and ends with a cookie is a pretty great day. I need every window clean by 2.15. Can you do it? <laughs> well, here's everything you need and a cool cap. Now, window washing is serious work. You take your work seriously. I like that in a monkey. Never mind what people inside are doing. Don't be curious or you'll get into trouble. <laughs> George promised to be good. But little monkeys sometimes forget. George wondered if the giraffe lived here with a friend, like the man with the yellow hat. giraffe and the zebra weren't saying hi. Maybe they couldn't see George in the dark. <laughs> there weren't any animals here at all. This was an amazing thing. Shadows made animals out of furniture. If only there was a way to show others this amazing thing. Did you do this? No, that monkey must have done it. George has seen people this unhappy before. They <laughs> usually needed some quiet time alone. Stop that monkey! Monkey paints room, human painter upset. That's gotta be George. <laughs> that 
That's just a bird. George liked his bird okay, but he knew he could make a much better bunny. What? It's a bunny. I want to talk with you, George. Did you paint a room, you naughty monkey? I don't know how to thank you, George. Yes, I thank him. Thank him? Thank him. <laughs> you know, I would have thought that was a horsey. But whoa, it's a zebra. Only a genius or a monkey could have thought of this. I can read it out as the Glass Palace Jungle Room. George, the Glass Palace is always half empty. But with more special rooms like this, I bet the glass is gonna be half full. <laughs> Have a good day. Yes, George had a job today, and it turned out just great. <laughs> <laughs> Hunley seems happy we're home. Hunley was very happy to know George was home and the city was still working just fine. I think he's just hungry. <laughs>